Before we begin today's program, I want to let you know that today's watch comes from Banggood. Not only do we have a link in the show notes for picking up this watch directly from Banggood, but as far as I know, this is the only place you can get this watch. I tried to do research on the internet and nobody else yet is carrying it. So your one choice, your best choice is banggood.com and uh, check the show notes uh, for information and hopefully a coupon uh, give you a bit of a discount on this as well. All right, on with the show. I knew this day would come. Yes, indeed. The day when we would have a smartwatch that could not only take your pulse, but actually read your blood pressure. Greetings and welcome to Smartwatch Ticks. We're unveiling something unlike any smartwatch you've seen before. In fact, I'd like you to forget everything you think you know about smartwatches. We've seen them all. We've got Android. We've got tethering. You can make and receive phone calls. We've got dancing animations on watch faces. We just about got everything in smartwatches. This is something different. Smart is, well, Einstein is smart. Picasso is smart. A box of chocolates can be smart. But this one, this one is beyond smart. This is actually more of a medical device than it is of a watch. It's uh, beautiful. It's in gold. Let's take the little back cover things off. It's got screen protector on the front. Let's peel that one off. This watch does not have a touch sensitive screen. You won't be touching the screen to do anything. It's all done through the buttons. You have a power button on the side. You have two other buttons to change and make things go up and down. And it's a super reflective mirror screen on it. But let's see what else we've got. We have a charging dock that you put the watch in, plug into a USB port to charge. We have the bands, nice leather bands with the quick release capability to put them on the watch. And we've got the manual. The manual tells us that what we're looking at is a a device that can do several things. But most importantly, it can actually do your blood pressure. And it does this in a very unique way. You're going to get to see that today. I'm I'm really taken by this watch. It's amazing. Let's, Let's give you a quick look at it. And then I want to show you a couple of other things. We press and hold. And it'll turn on, and you get the time. I'm turning it sideways because it's so brightly reflective. You have the side buttons that let you go through cycling things like your sleep capability of your deep sleep or light sleep and quality. Your steps, done on a daily basis, uh, counts your steps against a goal that you have. Your heart rate, measured in beats per minute like most watches, and then your systolic and diastolic blood pressure reading that is done right on the watch, okay? But before I go through and show you all of that stuff, I want to show you this. This is an interface cable to an old iPhone. And in fact, it's the whole reason I keep my old iPhone 4S around. If it wasn't for this, I wouldn't need that at all. Why? Is this important? Because of who it's connected to. Withings. Withings makes blood pressure monitors that use a cuff. I don't know if you know this or not, but this is a really cool thing. Now, I'm digressing slightly from our watch, but we're going to get back to it because we're talking the big mama here. This thing you put on your arm and you plug this in to your iPhone and you can get your blood pressure, reading, and pulse. I'm going to do this right now, and I'm going to explain something to you. There, I have the cuff on my arm. I'm plugging directly into the iPhone, and it's automatically launching the Withings app where I track my blood pressure and have for a long, long time. Well, let it come up here, and then I'll show you what we can do. This is the way... Blood pressure has been taken for years. When you go to your doctor's office, um, they put a stethoscope in their ear and they 
tie off a, a, a cuff like this one on your arm. They squeeze that little bulb and make it really tight, and then they start letting air out. And as the air comes out, it decreases uh, the pressure, and they're listening through the stethoscope for pulses. These pulses then represent the systolic and diastolic beats of your heart, and that's what's registered as your blood pressure. Now, let's count all the ways that there could be a problem with that. First of all, it's microphone-based, so if there's any noises like me talking or other things in the background, the uh, system could erroneously hear that and think it, it's an actual pulse uh, of the heart and register it as one of those reading levels, right? I can feel my uh, pulse going through my arm right now as it's counting down. The other thing is, it's over time. Your heart beats and beats and beats and beats. But the pressure, as you can see, is going down at a certain rate. Eh, probably because I'm talking. And the stethoscope, the doctor's listening to, or in this case, the microphone, is reading at a specific point in time, which may be before or after your actual systolic or diastolic measurement. And no wonder you get different results every time you try it. In fact, it's so often that it's different that this app is set up to take, if you want, three measurements and average them before it will give you the actual report. And that's just the way it is, folks, because a microphone is used to pick up sound. I'm going to try to be quiet for a little bit. Okay, it should be done now, and there you go. Uh, those are not right. I'm going to try it again. Okay, that's try number two, and now we're going to try it one more time. There we go. There's three attempts, and I hope they're not right, because that's way too high. But I have had a cup of coffee, so you never know. It could be. Um, those are the readings I'm getting from this uh, cuff, from Withings, all right? And... We would take that as being the best you could have and accurate, but it really is uh, depends on a very old and antiquated system of using sound over a changing pressure to read incremental pulses to determine these numbers. There's a better way, folks, and that's what this watch introduces. Let's take a look. So ever since they came up with this whole laser diode technology to shine a light into your arm, and from that light get a reflection of the beat of your pulse from your capillaries to come back and give you a reading of your blood pressure. Ever since they kind of came up with that idea and made it really cheap, they've put it into a whole bunch of watches. Almost anything you get now, tethering watch, Android watch, you name it, has got this little diode technology and giving you a pulse rate, right? Well, it's much more than that. In a really sensitive watch, they could actually get in there and get the waveform of your heartbeat. Now, later in the app, I'm going to show you that in detail. But just on the fly, to let you know, you can do your heart rate and your uh, blood pressure right straight from the watch. We want to do this. Let's see if we can stop that. Switch it over here to our systolic and diastolic blood pressure. I'm going to just do a general reading. And now, hopefully, if the ambient light is right, and if the location is right, and if I don't talk too loud and mess everything up, actually, there's no microphone, so talking shouldn't affect it at all unless I jiggle myself too much. You see the word testing down there? Above that is a little row of dashes, and when those dashes light up, it means it's taken a snippet of information, and it's analyzed it and come up with a projected systolic and diastolic pulse rate. Um, not pulse rate, but heartbeat. Um, and then it does another one and another one, and it has enough of them, it comes back and it gives you the actual systolic and diastolic numbers. Now, it's having time, a difficulty locking in. I've noticed this before. I'm going to keep trying it until I get a reading for you. And then we're going to switch over to the app so you can actually see it working from the app.
There we go. This time I used a little fleshy part of my thumb to put it on and press down really good and solid. That's the numbers I'm used to. Well, about 120 over 70, 60, 70. And it's come back with normal as my blood pressure. So the technology is completely different. And it's really diode-based, which didn't exist long ago when stethoscopes were invented, right? So what does it look like on the app? The app we end up using is called H Wristwatch, which you can download from the Play Store. Once you set up an account, get it all logged in, it looks pretty much like this. And the overlay lets you go into all these different areas. For example, there's the pulse. So if I tap on that, it gives me the opportunity to start my pulse without even turning the watch on. So, hmm, let's put it right here and hit start. See what we get. So we are wirelessly connected by Bluetooth and it's doing its testing. Now down at the bottom you see the countdown of the seconds. It's giving me some pulses and it's showing you a little line going across the bottom. That's not real. That's just fake. Um, it's just too regular. But it's just for display purposes. We're still counting down. We have 33 seconds to go. What's really cool about this one, though, is monitoring the pulse. It's taking several readings, and the one it finally gives you with, gives you the, as a result, is cl much closer to accurate than a lot of the smartwatches that automatically take the very first reading and call that accurate. Even when it's in the uh, real-time mode, usually that first pulse is too high, and then it uh, drifts from there, and um, it still just gives you that first pulse reading. So there we go. It's locking in. It's saying 91 is currently my pulse rate. There's a, an earlier one um, at this time frame between 12.30 and 1 o'clock. And when you have this on, it can be set to monitor every half hour, every hour, whatever you want, and it'll synchronize that data. When you do that, you can get a graph, which we're going to show you in a little bit. But first, there's more. In addition to the heart rate, this is why we're here, folks. This is the blood pressure. Now, I'm going to do it up here like I did before, but let's get in here. It says blood pressures have two modes, personal and general. Now, the difference, as I understand it, you go into personal. If you know what your real blood pressure is supposed to be, and again, you know, the one with the stethoscope or the, the microphone, uh, Anyway, if you can really get a handle on what your personal blood pressure should be, apparently you can enter that and it will work with whatever deviation there is in the watch to give you even closer accurate data than the general public. So your choice of personal or general mode, and you set that based on your own requirements in the mode settings. So this really is like a medical instrument. It's after the best possibility. We're just going to do a general. We're going to... Uh, Put it on my little fleshy part here, and I'm going to press down solidly, and we're going to give it a try. Let's say start test. Now, watch down here, folks. In fact, there. I can slide it up, and we can try to get it started. There, it's giving us a graph. You see that? It's not locking in yet because it's square waves. It's just either high or low, high or low. It hasn't registered the uh, actual pulse it says it's 40% done. That tends to be where it goes to until it starts to get a real heart rate. And we're seeing some signal coming up now. When it does this, I move it around a little bit to another spot. It's a little picky. See how it changed as I actually took it off and moved it? You'll know when you get a good waveform, and then you'll see that percentage shifting up there in the top as well. Okay, let's try it on the wrist. There we go. When it feels it's got a decent amount of information in that grouping of three or four pulses, 
and I'm wiggling a little with my fingers, my hand and wrist are wiggling a little. It is something you're supposed to stay really still for. Okay, uh, I got a test is invalid. Let's try it again. But I'm going to try it right here because we had a good connection. There we go. 120 over 73 is what it came up with with my measurement there. Do you want to save it? Sure. And it goes into my log. Wow. Pretty cool. There's the data. There's the graph. I only have those two data points right now. A green one for 120 and a yellow one for uh, 73. And over time that can accumulate. And again, I think it be can be set to take your blood pressure at regular intervals. However, as you noticed, it really is kind of tricky. You need it in the right spot. I've done it with the uh, band on and with it in standard watch position. And at certain times, it does work really well. It needs to have a good solid fit to it. But it does work, and it's about blood pressure. Again, no touch screen on this one. It's all controlled by the buttons. And when you're using it with the app, you don't even have to turn it on. It does the sleep thing, and it'll calculate your hours of deep and light sleep and your quality if you keep it on. And you can set your uh, steps in the system settings on the app. Transfer that over here, and it counts your steps. At midnight, it starts all over again. And you can get uh, track of your steps as well in here, in addition to the blood pressure and to uh, the pulse rate. So let me show you some other stuff in this. When we... Um, Go into here, there's your, your steps with your goal, and it can tell you information. Um, it says GPS sport or single sports. Um, and you can change the days to show you the different days of what your stats are. And you can come up here and get a graph over time uh, of your... Um, steps. And from there, I'm sure you can enter them manually into other apps. I don't think you can link directly with this one. Your total distance and your calories burned is all available to you. It all comes from this one master overview here. We care. This is a group thing where you can tie in with your friends who have the, the same watch and send messages apparently back and forth to them through this app. So a little bit of a WeChat thing going on. There's your sleep time and whatnot. And then it's got a zero and an overall health thing. And maybe that tells you a bit about your health. According to evaluation of heart rate data, your heart rate is normal. Couple of buttons down here. I tap that one. I can go into my particular profile and then my health watch, and then on the plus, if you tap that, you can go into the help center, again, your profile notifications, a self-test about this, and then provide feedback on the app. And the health cen help center um, can get you into all of these FAQs, as well as a quick start manual. What do you do if you forgot the password? It's a real-time pulse rate, can't be detected, and so forth. So, and then all of your problems, all of your problems can be listed right there. Quick start manual online for information.
Okay. Wow. Let's do the manual. Just so that if you're really interested in this thing, you can zoom in on this and, uh, and read about it. Again, the distinction between this particular method of doing blood pressure using diodes to get the difference in your actual heart chart, your heart pulse rate form, uh, is really different than using a stethoscope or a microphone to try and listen for the sound of the two different beat beats that you have your higher pressure systolic and your lower pressure diastolic um, that you typically find at the doctor's office or in those fancy expensive um, cuff pulse meters. And for my um, results, these are it's coming in a lot more accurate from the watch. There's the barcode if you want to scan it to see what the uh, health app looks like on your own device. And I think it's the wave of the future, actually. And because of this, once this technology expands, another kind of cool thing about introducing this watch is you may start seeing next year or the year after that there's going to be a competitive edge for those watch companies that actually add uh, blood pressure to pulse rate. Right now, they're simply offering your heart rate. Oftentimes, it's not even close to accurate. It's kind of a token thing. In fact, some have been accused of just giving you random data. Uh, people go out and exercise and should have a heart rate up in around 130, and it's just coming in and showing 80, 90, something like that, no matter whether they're sedentary or moving. So, um, yeah, for if there's interest in health, if there really it turns out to be interest in this kind of technology, we probably will see this migrated to other watches because, hey, look at it. The pulse meter is, or the, the diode receiver sensor, it appears to be just like in all the other watches. It's a software thing that's doing that interpretive process of coming up with your actual heart rate. And if that's software driven and it runs in a much lower than a standard Android 4.4 or 5.1 operating system, I mean, there's nothing really earth-shaking about the processor working in this watch, then, hey, that software could be licensed to some of our Android watch friends. And hello, Fino, number one, Lympho, are you guys watching this video? Who's going to be the first one? huh? Who's going to put heart rate along with pulse in the next generation of smartwatches? Because it's just begging to be added. It's really cool, and it's something worthwhile. But you know what? It's not the only solution. So, in addition to this video on this new H1 watch, I'm going to be putting together another video that takes you from this thing here, strapped and slaved to an iPhone, okay, to this thing here. The same machine, but wireless, that uses a Bluetooth signal to either an iPhone or an Android, or perhaps even to any smartwatch that accepts apps. And you can do the old cuff and, cuff and pony routine, uh, probably right from your watch with a Bluetooth connection to here. But that's for another video because today we are showing off this beautiful new, and I mean I knew, blood pressure monitoring, self-contained, gold smartwatch. Pretty impressive little thing, huh? Amazing that you can get all of that out of a little thing like this. Which comes to us from banggood.com. And uh, as far as I know, the only source right now for this watch the uh, H1 smartwatch blood pressure heart rate monitor complete watch available in the show notes down below. Click on the link and that'll take you over to banggood.com where you can pick up one of these puppies. And what about specs? Well, here's what we've got on this watch. 
It's a blood pressure monitor first. And you notice it's not touch screen. It's just driven by the buttons. And uh, because of that, you got to kind of forget everything you know about regular smartwatches. You're not going to change the watch face to a different one, analog or digital. It is what it is, and it's button driven. But for what it does, it does a lot, and it does it really well, especially the heart rate and the blood pressure. That's what we're after on this particular watch. It's very unique. It's very specific. Seems to be pretty darn accurate. And uh, I'd give it a thumbs up. I like it a lot. It's not my watch I wear every day. Well, it can be, but probably on my other arm or my ankle or in my pocket or on my forehead. Hey, that'd be it. I'll put it on my forehead and have the time always on. Everybody can look at me and know exactly what time it is or how hot I am with my blood pressure. <laughs> oh, I digress. Anyway, thank you, banggood.com, for your support and uh, your creativity in offering a variety of products. If you guys are looking for the unusual, different, and new, uh, check it out. Search these guys. Let me know if you come up with something you'd like me to review that you haven't seen anywhere else, all right? Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.